Well, I'm back. I know it's been a long time. A few things came up, but I have so many adoring fans out there that wanted just to see me on video again. So here I am. Welcome to Driving Through Life. And today we are going to be installing a new stereo in my new truck. Yeah, I got a new truck. Yeah, I got a new stereo. <laughs> So uh, I got a 09 Dodge Ram 1500, uh, awesome truck. Some of you may remember my old truck, which was like a, a 1917 Dodge Ram. Um, it really wasn't that old. That was a joke. 98 Dodge Ram, but uh, 5.7 or sorry, 5.9 liter Magnum. Uh, I upgraded to an 09 and uh, it's got the Hemi in it. Hemi. Hemi pumped about this thing i am out of the stone age between my old truck and this truck it's got a heated steering wheel heated steering wheel i thought i had to have hand warmers to have that but yeah let's uh let's take a look around it 09 love the dual exhaust on it cool gray color dig it let's take a look at the interior this is really what we're going to be playing in today uh, so we're going to be replacing this. I mean, it's okay, but it's just kind of old, kind of janky. Uh, it doesn't hook up to my phone well. So we're going to be taking this bad boy out today and putting in that bad boy. Well, that's less of a bad boy. This is a badder boy. All right, so moving on. Um, walking around, nice wheels. So clean. I really do dig this truck. Pumped to get started on it. Of course, I have a laundry list of things I want to do to it, but we're starting off today. First thing I'm going to do to it is get this stereo in. Uh, so let's get started. First things first, don't be an idiot. Take your good old 10 millimeter and uh, take off the negative terminal before you're working on any electronics. Uh, or if you want a really happy fun time, you're going to take a really long screwdriver and put it in between your teeth and stick it between each terminal. It's shockingly fun. <laughs> All right. So after you have disconnected the battery uh, or put your tongue on it, one of the two, I don't know. Don't care. Natural selection. Uh, next thing you're going to do is you're going to take out all of the rubber pieces here. These little rubber pieces in the, uh, the middle console, we're going to take this out. It's like a little rubber mat. Bam, look at that, they just hide stuff. It's like a little treasure trove of bolts. There's gonna be another one in here, right here. I'm gonna take that out. Um, uh, this mat right here, move my super cool sunglasses. It's a strategic place. This mat is actually just gonna pop right out. So I'm gonna come in here. Those look like uh, probably eight millimeter. I'm gonna come back in with an eight millimeter socket, take those bad boys out and take my handy dandy tool be careful when you're using a screwdriver but uh we'll get this little mat on and uh, we'll meet next when i'm taking stuff out all right handy dandy screwdriver get that little mat out but while i'm doing it, i thought hey let's chat a little bit and talk first i want to lead off with this little fucking mat sucks um I want to lead off with how I got this truck. <sighs> Funky little cut here. Had to get the correct tool. When you work on a car, just get the right tool. Yeah. So, ha, like a glove, I got this truck. So, I uh, got really tired of the old truck. I mean, I really dug the old truck, to be honest with you. It's my favorite uh, body style of Dodge Ram for quite quite a long time but uh you know the problem was it was really old and uh shit was starting to go wrong with it and initially we bought that truck just to have um something that we could like put carpeting in and and stuff like that right because when we first moved into the house my love was saying that she wanted to 
do a bunch of stuff to the house. You want to redo the carpet and, you know, redo the flooring and paint and stuff like that. Um, I was like, sure, I have a Infiniti G37 old man car. How about I just throw all of the old hardwood in the back of the plush leather and let's see how that works out. So, sold that. Got a 98 Dodge truck. It was really cool. I dug it. But, oil leaks. Um, it's just old, you know, so I decided that uh, we could upgrade a little bit. So, online, looking for a truck. By the way, I've been digging around because uh, the, the top two screws here are going to be T6? I don't know. T screws. Okay. Uh, that little guy, T screws. There's uh, three of them that I see right now. We uh, we learn as we go. Meh. So, uh, back to what I was saying, because I get really easily distracted with this shit. Squirrel! Find a truck we're looking for, uh, 08, 09, 2010 Dodge Rams, really like the, like the, uh, this year and a little bit older. And, uh, so we found one really, really liked it. And so we go to take a look at it and while getting approved for the loan. All right. Here's the thing. Like I said, we live when we learn. I just took one of the torque screws out in the middle. Turns out the two at the very top where it said Dodge at the beginning, uh, those are actually smaller. So we're just going to come back in here to our handy dandy box and find the right one. So I'm not one of those prepared YouTubers, you know, it's because I think that with a car channel, you got, you, you should be honest. I'm trying to fix my camera mount here. Crisis averted. Fix my camera. Okay. Where was I? Car channels. And I really like the real car channels. Uh, the ones that, uh, you know, they have a, a certain feel of realism to them. And I want to do that. I want to be that guy. So the reality is I only YouTube so much before I actually start working. So uh, here we are. We're just kind of going with the flow and we're figuring shit out as we go along. So back to the truck. Really wanted truck. I found a truck that I really liked. The reason I really liked it was because it already had a lot of stuff done to it. It had the tinted tails. Pardon my noise. Uh, it had uh, tinted headlights, wall black housing headlights, so I wouldn't have to throw anything in the oven and then paint everything. Had uh, running boards on it, had a new shifter, had uh, just kind of all the bells and whistles, new wheels, uh, you know, slightly bigger and, and uh, blacked out, etc. So it was a really cool truck and uh, really, really wanted it. But dude, when I actually went in, it was like, hey, I want this truck. Uh, great, we will sell this truck to you. Let's work out the loan. Started working out the loan. And it took the guy forever to work the loan. And I found out the reason was, he said, well, you know, Hunter, can you can you come in on, uh, on Friday? And I was going out of town. It was a Wednesday night. And uh, he wanted time to work the deal. And I'm like, nah, sorry, I'm gone Friday. I'm out of town. I'll come in. I'll buy this tomorrow. Now, this is a 40-minute drive that I have to make just to go look at this truck. Uh, he's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'll get this done on my, my day off. So uh, he works alone. And um, it took him all the next day to actually work the loan. Because, again, he didn't want to give it to another salesperson. So it takes him all day to work this freaking loan. At the end of the day, after I blow him up saying, hey, I got to, you know, I'm going out of town this weekend. I got to drive 40 minutes just to come out there. He says, oh, okay, okay. I got the, I got the loan done. I got the loan done. And I was like, sweet. And so I asked him what the terms of the loan were and stuff like that. He's like, oh, my, my finance guy will tell you, but you know, you're like 400 a month or something. I'm like, the fuck? what? It's a $17,000 truck. How the hell? Am I in it for $400 a month? He's like, oh, my, my finance guy's going to explain it. 
uh, okay, I'm, I'm excited to hear that. Call the finance guy. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, here are your terms. And uh, it is a, uh, you know, X amount of loan. Here's your interest rate, blah, blah, blah. And you're $450 a month. And I'm like, what? How? On a 17? Like, I'm not a mathematician by any means, but I know that is wrong. He says, well, you know, it's uh, that's based off of your uh, interest rate. And it's like, I don't know, it's kind of low interest rate for something. I said, how much is the total loan for? He says, $24,000. What? Why the hell am I having a $24,000 loan on a $17,000 truck? Future reference, the ones... Uh, the bolts are a seven millimeter. The ones that are very, very small, right under your HVAC controls. Bing. So he's like, uh, well, that's, you know what the loan is. And, and uh, the reason it's so expensive is because you have to have a warranty and gap insurance. Like, no, no, I don't have to have that. He said, yep, that's what the bank's requiring. I said, no, that's not a thing. I was traveling the next day. So on Friday, from the airport, I call the credit union. Ow! You reference, I'm getting the shift knob off right now. And I just stabbed myself. Not a big deal, not bleeding. Uh, so, I call... <sighs> Uno momento. Okay, here's how this shift knob comes off. First off, this metal piece is at the bottom. Do, do, do. The shift knob goes over top like this, and this actually slides up. To get it off, you want to twist and pull it straight down. Or in my case, get a screwdriver and pull it straight down and stab yourself. Pro tip, don't stab yourself. Back to the story. So um next day i am flying out of town i don't remember whether it was like florida or something like that travel a bit for work and uh so i called the loan place the credit union and i like first guy i talked to he's like oh i don't have i'm not in that department and uh say okay well how do i how do i get to that department he transfers me over real nice dude and i end up oh it's another rubber bust out your rubbers so After I talk to the, I get over to the correct department, talk to the lady who has my loan on file, looking at it. She tells me the terms, which were high as it was, and there was no mention of requirements, just verification of income, which is really, really normal. And so I ended up saying, okay, well, there, there are no other requirements whatsoever. She said, uh, no. Uh, so I don't have to have gap insurance or warranty on this. She's like, uh, no, like I'm the asshole. So I say, well, the dealership is saying that they require gap insurance and a warranty on this, which I knew full damn well that that wasn't the case. I was like, so just to make sure I don't need this stuff. She says, no, not at all. I'm like, huh? So I'm, uh, I'm getting cornholed right now, huh? She says, well, maybe there's just some, I'm like, you're just being nice. It's fine. Thank you very much. Call the dealership back. By this time, I had to jump on a flight. I was in the story so that we can actually show you what's going on here. Um, so, there were two bolts. Actually, no bolts right here. There was a uh, larger, I think it was a T6 or T7 screw right here. There's one 7 millimeter under the cup holder, another 7 millimeter under the cup holder. Uh, we had two more 7 millimeters in this tray right here. And we had uh, the two really small torque screws right there. Now at this point, we're all wobbly and we're gonna pull this straight out. So, I'm leaving the airport. I love plastic tabs. Literally the bane of my existence. Um, so, leaving the airport, get into an Uber. And uh, I jump on the phone with the sales guy. Tell me what the, the requirements were again. He's like, oh, yeah, you have to have the insurance. You have to have the the gap insurance as well as the warranty. I'm like, 
You sure about that? He says, yeah, the uh, bank needs it. I said, well, that's bullshit. I just talked to the bank and they said they don't need it, actually. He's like, oh, well, you talked to the wrong department. It's the second department. I'm like, no, 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 no. I talked to the second department. I talked to Karen, the manager. Karen. I talked to the manager. In this scenario, Karen was the manager. She looked at my paperwork and she said, no, there's no requirements. And this dude says, well, you, you need a warranty. I said, I need one for the loan. He said, no, 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 you need a warranty. No, I don't need a warranty. It's like, well, I just don't understand why anyone would say no to something. They don't even know what it covers. Motherfucker. That's not the point. You lied to me. So I'm yelling at this dude. And this poor little old lady driving my Uber was kind of looking in the back mirror. I felt bad. I said, here, here's the thing is you're going to get me out of this truck. 17 out the door. Otherwise, kiss my ass. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a Yelp account. I'm going to get a Yelp account just to leave a bad review on you. Yeah, that'll show you. You're going to get a negative Yelp rating. That's what people do on Yelp is, is, is complain. That's my understanding. I don't know. I don't really use a Yelp that much. But uh, he said, I can't do that. I have the paper in front of me. I can't do that. I can't do it. I'm like, all right, well, good luck. Hang up the phone. Poor little old lady driving. Oh, you're trying to buy a truck? I'm like, yes. Yeah, I really am. But these guys are trying to screw me. Uh, I hate it when when dealers are, are no, um, no honest. I'm like, hey, I agree with you 110%. I was like, I'm sorry for yelling. It's okay. My husband, he would have said much, much worse to that dick. And you get five stars for this ride. Now... Keep in mind when you're pulling this off, there's going to be some wires and stuff. One thing I ran into here was actually this bulb right here, <clears throat> which was attached into the shifter area. And what you're going to need to do is just twist it counterclockwise, and that's going to come out. Last thing you have right here is going to be a cigarette lighter. We're just going to um, unplug that, and then this whole piece is going to fall off. To get pulled off, not fall off. Falling off would be bad. That's nasty. What is that? Maybe get a wet wipe while I'm in here. Now, next step is we're on to taking the uh, top face off. Previously, we've taken all the bolts off uh, up here, etc., that we need, but there is one extra bolt. I don't know if you can see it under this cover. So you're just going to pop this cover off that is normally here. Uh, with a screwdriver and then you're gonna get that with a phillips so we take that screw off here it's very easy just pull off around the sides and you're going to be left with a bunch of uh well just a few cords that you need to unplug things like hvac we have different lighting we have uh, the plug for four wheel drive etc so just unplug these if you want this whole fascia out of the way which is what i would recommend before putting in the new stereo all right kids <clears throat> got that dash piece off and this is what we're left with Man, it, you know, here's kind of why I love trucks, is there's so much room for activities right here. Just so much room. Still need a weapon app for that. All right, so next step is we're going to unhook our stock uh, head unit. So as you can see, one in each corner. Um, this is probably going to be a, a 10. Just kidding, it's still a seven. So uh, we're gonna take these four off and meet you in a second when we have this bad boy out. All right. Got uh, all got the four bolts out. Next step is we're going to disconnect uh, all the stock connectors. Then we'll take a look at uh, what we bought ourselves for Christmas in October. All right. <clears throat> so here's what we have. Uh, took out everything. Everything's gone. Now, your first step is to take everything out. Uh, your second step is to have uh, to first off find the, the stereo that you want, uh, the features that you want, etc. Get a good price on them. But the main step is having a next door neighbor that is a manager at a uh, car audio place that helps a lot. And what he can do for you, or I guess really just walk in off the street to any car audio place, and they can do for you is all of the wiring shit for you. So here we have, uh, I chose a Pioneer. Uh, it's a 2818. It's got a DVD player, Bluetooth, multifunction, all that good shit that every deck has these days. Uh, 
also got set up with uh, the wiring connector for my backup camera so that that can plug right into this boy and then I went in and uh, basically told them uh, the vehicle that I had and they were able to actually wire up all the connectors for me for antenna uh, all my speakers are right here and they wired it up to this maestro box uh, that does all the conversion for you also, which I want to tell you is not legal and I do not condone and most likely will not use, but there's a little piece right here. It used to be you'd have to hook all of the DVD players up to a little switch and flick it on and off so that you can watch DVDs while driving. But in this case, they've now uh, bypassed it just with a relay, which is really, really nice. Now to run the microphone, I actually want the microphone to sit um, up here. So I'm going to have to run it all the way up in uh, the cord all the way along here, down here. There are two bolts that I just took out of this so I can take off the A-pillar frame. They are 10 millimeter bolts. And then this will pop right off. Now, you might be asking yourself, why does Hunter have on those beautiful, sexy glasses? Well, I tell you, the reason is so there's some cutting that has to be done. So we're going to take one of our favorite tools, the Dremel, and we're going to get some shit done. Yeah. So what I had to do here, um, and I'm still kind of working on this, but I had to actually cut part of the bottom out so that the deck is going to fit in there. Uh, the next is I'm going to cut part of that top lip. Now what I'm using is a Dremel, just basic Dremel, but the plastic actually folds under to make a lip so if i cut right down the center here i can buy myself you know a couple centimeters and see if that'll work the second thing i'm gonna have to do is that metal bracket in there is kind of in the way so i might have to bend or cut that out or just bend it to my will with a sledgehammer i don't know i'll figure it out but i'll let you know and we're continuing to cut this now all right super happy fun time so turns out that this metal piece the top part of it needs to come out completely and you can see i made a couple of notches there on the left right here so what i have to do now is call it a night because my feet are cold number one uh number two my bit is jacked so i need a new bit and then tomorrow we're going to slice right through this thing like butter and the hardest part will be over all right day two i had to go get uh some little metal uh, blades for the old Dremel. And I found this handy dandy little right angle thing for like 30 bucks at Lowe's. So I'm gonna be able to get into the spaces a little bit easier, which is awesome. It sounds super safe. I'm sure nothing could go wrong. So yeah, what we're gonna do now is we're going to finish actually cutting out this uh, this metal piece. Now I've seen some stuff online where you can just like cut little slits in it and, and like push it up, but you know, I, I'm just going to cut it. You know, I'm just going to cut it all the way out. And it'd be like, that's not what I'm going to do. Yeah. Glasses, everyone. And in fact, that is a cool 90 degree thing. You get some elbow room. It's like a big ass elbows. <sighs> okay. And ring, 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 ring. Just had a spark in my face. I actually cut pretty fast. I'm a little surprised. All right, let's do the other side. <laughs> I'm gonna be tasting metal for like a minute. And we're done. Cut pretty well. Don't need that anymore. All right, uh, let's see if this fits. And whammy, it fits. Let me get this bright ass light out of the way. Uh, fits just great, had to cut off. I mean, I probably could have done slits across that and just bent it back, but it was just a pain in the ass. Um, so this fits right in. Uh, I don't know if you could see there, that hole right there, there is a seven millimeter uh, screw that goes into this metal bracket. Uh, the metal bracket is actually still pretty stable, but uh, even without the top part, but with just a little bit of wangling, uh, this actually, two-handed wangling, this will actually just fit right in. Not one-handed, two, whoop. You know what? 
it fits. I just showed it to you. On to the next step, we're going to uh, mount up our brackets to the side here and on the other side. And then uh, we'll hook all the wires up and, uh, you know, see what happens. All right. So we have our uh, head unit here. We have these little brackets that came with it. Um, these are actually going to bolt into where our four bolts came out of from the stock head unit. And our first step here is just going to be to line up and find the correct holes. I'm going to try to get this matching as much as possible. So we'll get this uh, sucker uh, bolted down with the Phillips head uh, bolts that they give you with this bracket and with the magic of editing you're gonna have it done. Poof! See? Told you it was magic. So we put the brackets on. A uh, little bit of a pro tip. Make sure that you get each and every single one of these started before you actually turn uh, tighten them down because it uh, will allow the brackets shift a little bit and some of these are a little bit tricky to get in. So next we are going to plug everything in. Okay. Here's where it gets fun. I don't know if I could do this with one hand and videotape and all that crap, but you know, we gonna find out. You gonna learn today. So first thing uh, I wanna do is I wanna take the harness for my camera. Um, in this scenario, I actually only need to take this wire that says, oddly enough, camera, and I will be hooking that up into uh, actually the brown hole. Ting tang, walla walla bing bang. Ooh ee, ooh ah ah, ting tang, walla walla bing bang. Uh, I'm gonna be taking the other end of this connection and putting it into the white connection. But, you know, if you go to a place and have them wire all this up for you, uh, it is really, the hardest part is cutting everything out. Everything else just plugs and plays. Uh, so I'm gonna plug some of this stuff in and kind of show you the end result um, on the back side of the deck and then we'll kind of go through plugging everything in and the attachment that you need uh, for the antenna. All right, here's what we got going on. Everything is hooked up. Um, make sure that you get the antenna adapter. Let me show you the back of the deck here. Put down nice and soft. Uh, we have our mic that came with um, the head unit that we've run in the back down through here underneath the footwell and then up the A-pillar which uh, I, I love trucks. There's just so much, there's so much room under here for activities. Look at all this, look at all that. Tons of room to run wires and stuff. Uh, the guys at Sound Warehouse went ahead and uh, made all the, the uh, hooked up all the speaker wires for me. So it's literally just plug and play. We have our uh, camera going into the brown hole. Once again, giggity. Uh, antenna's plugged up. Everything is plugged. And then on the other end, it's literally just matching up the connectors. And they're three distinct sizes. Super easy. Can't really mess it up. Well, I mean, I guess we'll see if we don't mess it up. We'll find out here in a minute. So I'm actually going to shove all this in here. Um, kind of mount it. I'm going to turn on the car just to make sure everything works. And uh, we'll see how we go from there. All right, put it in. Looks pretty good. Uh, this is the part of every single install where I say, so technically this should work. Well, it, uh, it works. Uh, so far, we'll see if the backup camera and everything works here in just a second. Uh, so, you know, a little pro tip when you're getting the wires in, there is a nice little spot back here where you can actually get your hand up under here and actually pull some of the, the wiring down so that when you put in the, uh, the head you did, it doesn't get stuck up on everything. But everything looks... Uh, pretty good. It's real solid, even though I cut a hunk of metal out of the back of there. Um, it's asking for Bluetooth, so I'll set that up here in a minute. Uh, see what happens when I go in reverse. Whammy! Reverse camera. So, does uh, everything that I want. Really pumped about this, and uh, technically, I would be able to put in a DVD if I were on, say, a, a road trip and there were individuals that uh you know got distracted easily or needed to be distracted easily i could put on like you know coco or something Hola. so yeah next step i'm just gonna put everything back together show you the end result and we'll see how it goes 
Another pro tip for y'all. Y'all. Another pro tip for y'all. This little bowl I found for $3 at a garage sale. I think I paid 50 cents for it, maybe. Got a giant magnet on the bottom of it, and this thing is awesome. I just throw all of my screws in this, and then I can mount it wherever magnets mount, preferably on, on metal. Look at that. Bam! Saved all my screws in there. Woohoo! All works. Just so you note, a little bit of uh, the actual uh, faceplate itself. The, the fascia needs to be trimmed, as you can see. Went a little wide on a couple of spots, but I'll come in and touch that up, and I'm going to end up probably just wrapping this whole thing with vinyl anyway. That'll be a video to continue, but it works really, really well. Uh, everything's back together. I'm pumped. So excited. So, moral of the story is if you're buying a truck, do your due diligence because people break the golden rule all the time of not being a dick. Like, all you got to do in this life is not be a dick. Now... I'm kind of a dick sometimes, but I'm funny while doing it, so that's completely different. Hello? That's not funny! Uh, also, use the right tools when you do an install. If, uh, you know, I can't count how many times I have gone out there, done an install, and tried to rig tools and stuff like that, just go buy the right tools if you can afford it makes it a ton easier, like all the Dremel work I had to do, uh, it would have taken me forever with like a little handsaw or something like that. So just get the right tools to begin with. Uh, YouTube helps a lot uh, for everything, and that's why I am making this video, little install tutorial slash me just talking shit for a little while because I haven't posted a YouTube video, and you guys missed me so much. All right, guys, uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, like, bells, notifications, all that shit. Uh, Facebook, Insta tweeters, grams, and stuff like that. Go out there, enjoy your life, don't be a dick, and as always, keep on driving.